everybody, welcome to another episode of Deep Fat Fried, starring the great Paul, everybody. Thank you. Paul! Thank you. Thank you. Paul! I've been perfecting my man of the people wave. What do you think? I like it. I like the little side wave. Yeah. Uh, TJ? My, 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 my sisters used to say it's um, the princess wave. It's elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist. Uh, touch your hair and blow a kiss. Elbow, elbow, elbow wrist, wrist, wrist. Touch your hair and blow a Paul, kiss. Paul, it like you're doing this, Paul. I mean, I don't... I dismiss you. Be gone from my I wasn't thinking royal about that. presence. Shoo. Yes. Shoo. Be gone with you. Oh. Get, get ye gone. Oh, how delightful. How frightfully delightful. Man, oh, to be high society. <laughs> I right, know. gentlemen? Yeah, that's true. I mean, I so love guys, people think we're this way I love because being we're in how, high society. Yeah, whatever. How about Brad Dourif? How about him? <laughs> Let's have a him? round of applause for Brad Dourif, everybody. <laughs> Voice of Chucky. Great character actor. Has underrated read. character actor Brad Dourif, everyone. Yes. Apropos of nothing. Let's get Brad Dourif on this show. I would We've love, interviewed oh, Eve Uwe Boll. The sky's the limit. Yeah. Get Brad Dourif on DFF. Well, we'll yeah. never match up to the Uva Bowl. Let's get him to get on here and I talk mean, shit is, about the new nobody Chucky Nobody is one-tenth of the man that Uva Bowl is. Did you see that? T I retweeted him recently where he just went on like a rampage about how much he loves pussy. Yes, dude. Uva Bowl. Uh, He's all that is man. Maybe his movies are not the great. I mean, I'm starting to think we just don't understand. Maybe he's, you don't. He's on that level, dude. I mean, dude, he, he is a... <laughs> charismatic sexual giant tj <laughs> he loves pussy he His, loves vagina he would fucking punch an alien's fucking head clean off its fucking shoulders dude what the fuck would you do tj but cower in fear and die in a dark fucking everything hole. that these guys are saying is actually stuff on uva's uh twitter yeah like he he literally said like he was like have you seen the movie aliens <laughs> you I know when he retweets somebody that <laughs> shits on his movies like somebody will post like postal lmao so bad and he'll be like fuck you asshole plot <laughs> you know what i mean he's just like, sweet he's fucking awesome he's like my role model <laughs> now <laughs> yeah he knows how to Eat deal the fat with it dick, you piece of shit Oh, Uva. If you guys have, if anyone's out there that hasn't gone and watched our Uva Bowl Uwe, Uwe, Uwe. interview, you gotta go check that out. It's fucking classic. Have some oh, yeah, salbraten. It's only at 25,000 views right now, but it deserves, I will not rest 100 until, million. 100 million. Fuck views. that. How many people are there on Earth? 7 billion? 7.5 That's how million? many views it needs. Right. Everyone on Earth needs to watch that. It's we need to get totally underviewed. We need to get people to translate it into other languages. That than our last episode. Exactly. And our last episode was good, but it didn't have Uva Bowl on yeah, it. Yeah, our last episode was just like, this is whether Elizabeth Warren's <laughs> worth a <of> shit. <laughs> Spoiler, nope. No. <laughs> you know, so, oh my God. While we're on the subject of that, uh, before we get into the topic of tonight, which is the wall, we're going to do, you know, we got we to have our obligatory uh, banter here. Uh, did you doing. guys skip, skip, skip it, Lame. skip it, skip it, skip it. Time episode skip. Episode time starts at 838. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> for when the show Fuck really it, starts. Hey, I'm glad that they, those people have that. Yeah, that's true. More Some power to them. like the banter. Yeah, so. but you know, it's part of the fucking tradition. No, man. Uh, but never skip it. Did either of you guys happen? I'm going to assume no, but maybe. Did either of you guys happen to catch uh, Bill Maher's latest? New rules uh, monologue. No. <sighs> is it a doozy of a day? I mean, it is like they're getting dumber, dude. They're getting dumber for sure. New rule. He's slipping. He's, oh, Trump he's slipping. sucks. He slips, slip, slipping. The, the premise of his latest thing is uh, <clears throat> look at all these Democrats in the field, but the fucking stupid Democrat voters just want to hold them accountable for shit they've done. Like, why are we so picky, you guys? The The premise of his rant is, like, he literally, he said, Kamala Harris is being asked to apologize for being a prosecutor because she wasn't progressive enough. Okay. It's like, yeah, she's running for the fucking Democrats, right? Jack boot <laughs> fucking cop running the country now? Is yeah. that a bad thing to call out? 
Oh God! The, sa- the same dude that's <coughs> argued pill. so fervently for Probably legalization of pot and other drugs, pill. and is like a total. I mean, Bill Maher's pretty progressive, and for him to suddenly just be like, you know what? We have to swallow corporate Democrat and shit. The, the, they did it with Hillary too. The logic behind it is: look at how all the people settle for Trump on the right. Well, that's what, dude. That's what means. we should be more like that and just settle for something. I'll tell you what. Well, like what? I stopped watching Bill Maher. I don't know about you. I mean, but that's when I stopped tuning in all the time. Was when he was like, "We need to support Hillary." And I'm just like, I am no, now. See ya. I, I I've watched Bill Maher as someone who liked Bill Maher for a while, and then I kind of fell off. But now I've started to watch Bill Maher from the perspective of someone who hates Bill Maher. Oh, shit. Dude. And uh, I got to say, his show is actually better if you hate him. I, every time <laughs> I watch Bill Maher now, I'm just overcome with the feeling that, like, he's, he's a guy that showed himself to be so adept at calling out the obvious bullshit of religion. Oh, but yet yeah. can't call out the obvious bullshit of the left. Like, he's so ideologically committed and it wasn't like that until thing. it's just this Trump derangement right. bullshit. Because now that Trump's in office, it's like he can't. Crit- it's like nope. Now that the Republican is president, we're no longer allowed to be critical of Maybe ourselves. He's dry- oh well, that's just ridiculous. Like, yeah, that's just silly. It's it's another one of these like shamers that come along and go like, no, but you wish you voted for Hillary. <laughs> no, Hillary would have been no. better than this. Huh? Sorry, I don't wish. I, and it's I don't just wish just like that. maybe by some metrics she would have been better, but overall, sure no. <laughs> just another stuffed suit in the presidency. <laughs> even if I thought that, even if you you compel me that Hillary would have been better than this, yeah. Which hey, maybe she would have. I don't know. Should have on some on some Should've liberal won. metric, she probably. Oh my god! I mean, yeah, look uh, on certain. Re- I mean, she wouldn't be wasting billions of um, taxpayer of, dollars on building a dumbass wall right now. Instead That's of objectively two, true. yeah, instead of two right wing retards in the Supreme Court, she would have probably put in like two you know left wing retards. Not really even left. She, it would have been you know moderate centrist, centrist yeah. corporatist fucks. Right. Instead, which is that better? I think no. it is, but no, it not isn't. by much. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, even the if it's, corporatist in I mean, there tells it, me no. Yeah, I, I, I mean, mean, it's all it's all subjective, but yeah, I mean, I guess maybe it'd be more palatable to more Americans if that's where you, you know, if that's your barometer. That's about like, it. Yeah, it's like more people are okay with this. But even if I agree with the premise that Hillary was better, I still I'm still glad I didn't vote for her because I don't want to be complicit in her. You know? Well, yeah. I, I mean, hey, you, I would rather stand my ground as one of the more hated people in society, one who does not vote, <laughs> than have to like. Do the fucking mental gymnastics of excusing a vote yeah. for Hillary Clinton. Sorry. Like, just like Bill Maher does I'd every night. Not, I'd, I'd rather not carry that big old fucking albatross around it's really, my neck, if you don't mind. It's kind of just a matter of these people who, who vote for the lesser of two evils. They, they imagine that it's this very pragmatic decision. Like, I am being mature by settling for right. less. No. It's like, no, you're ensuring the status quo keeps se- serving you tepid, lukewarm shit. Because they know you'll accept it. it. They know you'll accept it. They know you'll accept oh, it. Whatever. So whatever. I'm, t- I'm so tired of the argument. Honestly, it is tedious. I'm so tired of having to retype it and remake but, it to people. But you, but, but, you, it, but you guys already explained it. It's like it's what Bill Maher. That's what Bill Maher does every time he goes on the show. Now it's just this gymnastics to say, like, okay, right. I have to stay within the, this confines of this because I, I supported someone who probably a few and years like, before this dude was smart enough to call out religion. He's smart well, enough to if, know better. If there was here. no Trump. Then Bill uh, and they had like a, a more moderate conservative had run like Bill Maher wouldn't be doing this and we no, all know he'd be, it. he'd be doing his little like I'm lefty but I criticize both sides and it thing. was it was such a pronounced shift with him too because it was like he used to call the left out for stupid shit all the time like the big thing with Ben Affleck where he calls out like basically apo- they they've been being an apologist for Islamophobia you know and be like and saying like look it's not Islamophobia to criticize Islam and it's like he got fucking reamed by a fucking Academy Award winning actor and him and Sam Harris right and it's well. Just, it went from that to just, let's uh, go ahead and get to the topic at hand. We've done our obligatory 10 minutes of banter. Sweet. That thus concludes the banter segment. Time stamp 1039. Bam, bam, there you go. <laughs> go ahead. The slap it down show. there. Play this is where the again, show TJ. really begins. Yeah. You know what, TJ? May, may as well play the show intro again. I'm TJ. not playing it again. Play it again, TJ. Rock that shit. No. Da, da, da. No. All right, I'll I play it. it. TJ. I'll play it. But instead of showing them that, we're going to show you headbanging to it. 
Never mind. No? Let's uh, just go into the show. All right. I'll pass, go into the dude. show. I'll pass. <laughs> all right. Build the wall, TJ. <laughs> I forgot. I Build finally, the wall. After working with Paul for all this time, I finally figured nope, out how Banner's over. to get Paul off a kick. Just suggest something that he doesn't want to do as an alternative. <laughs> You're right, dude. Just suggest You're he goes so outside, right. dude. Like I Paul told you that. He's like, <laughs> Paul, go interact with people. And Paul be like, never mind. I'm good, dude. I'm a slow learner. I no, finally I, figured I it out, though. I the people thing. Oh, I think you do. Sometimes. All right. I so uh, let's go ahead and uh, start by taking a look at a video. Okay. Of uh, a, you know the the Trump talking to his uh, his base, one of his big speechy weechies. Uh huh. Check it out. Spilled so two weeks ago, the border patrol. These are great people. Border patrol Tremendous agents. People. These are people that know more about the border than anybody will ever know. It's a line in the sand. Well, how could they know? See? But how could they know that if they know more than anybody would ever know? <laughs> they know more than anyone could know. Well, but I don't know. I would know that then. I am honestly kind of shocked that Trump is saying that someone knows more about something than him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is. That's true. That's the first time I've ever seen that. Yeah. So. Usually he knows more than anyone could know. <laughs> Trust this is him. a rare exception. <laughs> In this case, though, it's Border Patrol. Is it a sign of desperation that he's conferring that other people know more than him now? Uh, is he I don't looking know. desperately is, for uh, allies? This is before he was elected. <laughs> is it? Okay. Yes. Oh, shit. So this is maybe his ego has just gotten bigger since to the point where now. Yeah, it's so sad that we can't tell the difference between Trump as a <laughs> president <laughs> and Trump as a Paul, candidate. Because no, but, but, he's still doing these <laughs> retarded rallies in front of a bunch of white people. <laughs> You know well, I, mean? I thought this was recent, dude. That's beautiful. I did. Well, how, how would I, I know? I don't blame you. I don't blame you. But it's just interesting that I didn't <coughs> think about that the whole time. That is a good observation. Other than, of course, Sheriff Joe Arpaio, who endorsed me. Well, it right? dated itself now. Yeah. Sheriff Joe. Sheriff Joe knows about the border, and he endorsed me. And two weeks ago, I got a call that the Border Patrol wants to endorse you. They've never endorsed a candidate for president ever in their history. And... 16,500 Border Patrol agents endorsed me. And when I spoke to one of the top people, I said, let me ask you this question. Man, it's so crazy that people whose <laughs> industry he wants to pour a bunch of money into support him. It's so odd. Yeah. I, I can't believe it. He just wants to increase the funding to that part of our uh, government, and he wants to like, probably double or triple the, the amount of people working in that industry, but I don't know why they would support him. I mean, if that's even true. It's Donald Trump. I mean, who the fuck knows if they did that or not, but they probably didn't even really do it. Uh, I think they did, actually, but... I don't, I'm not sure if they, can actually, if they actually can. Either. I mean, I, Border Patrol itself didn't... Obvi I mean, you know, obviously, right. as a government agency, didn't say, we yeah. endorsed Donald... It was like a, a union of them or some shit. Right. Maybe. Because it's very important to me. Because I'm always flexible. Let me ask you this. It's a very important question. You're endorsing me, and you want to see it stopped. How bad is it? They said, Mr. Trump, you have no idea. We have the equipment. We have everything. We're told to stand back and let people just flow across like Swiss cheese, okay? Boom. I really <coughs> flow across? Go. Okay. All right. You know, fair enough, man. So he's not, he's not right. lying about the endorsement. Hey, fair enough. So I'm right, Scotty. Okay. Just just say I'm right, Scott. Damn, dude. The only ego bigger in this fucking equation than Trump's is TJ's, dude. What? Like you don't like me, right? Rel yeah, but man, you you wallow in it like a pig in shit, TJ. <sighs> well, I I, I, I that's good handle shit. it gracefully. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, he pulled up the information. Yeah. He, he, what he, he's saying is correct. So he's right. I am right, Scott. You're right. <laughs> yeah. I don't All right. Care. You're right. Right is right. I'm right. Yeah. All right. Boo. Boo! I don't I even know what we're doing. So, I think we need the wall. How important is the wall to the Border Patrol people? They said, Mr. Trump, it's absolutely vital. And actually, the one man said something that was interesting. He said, it's an absolutely important tool, maybe our most important tool, to stop what's going on, Mr. Trump. So, I felt good when he said that, because I don't want to be wasting a lot of time, folks. And you know what? Yeah, that's far be it from you. Yeah, the president never wants to waste anyone's time. I mean, of course, time. the Border Patrol Union wants this expansion of the wall because they feel like it's going to support their presence at the wall and thus beef up their numbers at the wall. It's like if I come on, uh, if I'm on, if I'm running for president and I'm like every fucking, 
you know, Weeaboo is going to get to, get to marry their fucking anime pillow or whatever the fuck. <laughs> You know, the Weeaboo Union's gonna give me that fucking endorsement, dude. Yeah. Yeah, each Weeaboo will be allotted uh, funding to go to Japan several times a year. Furries are allowed <laughs> to fuck in public because they are technically animals when in fursuits. <laughs> <laughs> I got the fursuit union on, on my side. The furry vote is through the roof for President Trump. Yeah, I mean, you know, hey, uh, this is America. You know, you scratch our back, we scratch yours, you know? So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not shot. It, what, the, the the good que- the question is what does that mean? What is that supposed to mean to me? How am I supposed to be convinced by that? I'm gonna give these guys something so they like me. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. That's how fucking reciprocation works. If I didn't think it was gonna work, I could turn that off in two seconds, and I think people would understand. <coughs> but when I ask the people that know more about the border than anybody, how important is the wall? And they tell me it is absolutely vital. Vital. In the the other words, it's a vital tool. It's an important tool. It's maybe the most important tool that they can think of. We're going to build the wall. We have no choice. We have no choice. No choice. Here's a the next one. Is a, the, actually the, the, the crowd <coughs> cheering for the wall, dude. This is this actually whoa, happens at, whoa, at, at whoa, a lot of his campaigns. <coughs> so it's build the wall. <coughs> All right. Even now, they, we're gonna build the wall. We have no choice. We have no choice. I guess we would have gotten to that if I just kept playing the same one. But whatever. Build the wall. Build the wall. Build the wall. Louder. Louder. Get Louder. it up. Build that wall. 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 It's not really that, that, really that great of a cheer. Build that wall. Build that wall. Can Trump actually yell? Doesn't sound like it. Build that wall. Build, build that, that wall. wall. Build that wall. I mean, if Obama build was like that a build wall. that wall chant, dude, I, he would get into it. Yeah, Obama would be fucking. He'd be we like, "We need to build that wall." You know what I mean? Like he would, he, like he would build to it. You know what I mean? And the crowd would be like, "Yeah." Yeah, I, I, I generally think that probably the politician shouldn't join the chant in the <laughs> first that, place. So. Look, look, look at that black lady in the <laughs> bottom right. Yep. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? <laughs> what? I wonder how she feels now. I wonder if she's similarly filled with mirth today. That's uh, that's uh, half of... Uh, what's that? She looks photoshopped. So in, we've heard all the arguments for the wall. I mean, and I have to ask you guys a question. Do you guys think a wall would work? I mean... Just general answer, do you think building a wall is going to solve or be a great, like a vital tool to solving the immigration issues facing America? Well, you know, I didn't think so, but then I heard that the Border Patrol agents... Yeah, they say so. ...say that it and would. They, mo- and they know more than anybody, they know, know, than anyone could ever know. They know more about, I mean, they know more about the border than me, for sure. I've never been... Yeah. I mean, they, I've, I've, I've they seen the border. the border. I guess I've crossed it once. Yeah, you've been to the border. So, yeah, yeah but I mean, I, I've never, I, I don't have the experience with it that a border patrol yeah. agent has, No, though. of course not. So, no. I mean, you got to defer to the border Human patrol do. agents, you know? So, uh, I mean, I guess so. I guess the wall would work, man. Episode over. You know? So you guys, you guys believe the wall would work? No. No, I don't. No. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, was like, I was like, hey, if you really do, I mean, you're retarded, and that's okay. <laughs> it's okay to be retarded. No, I don't think for a second that the wall would So could you work. pull up a picture of a border wall? So, cause we are, yeah, I do have a picture of a border wall yeah, here. So. Uh, this is, I guess, uh, this looks like a, like a 3D rendering of someone's idea of the wall. I don't know if this is any sort of official imagery or if this is just Some of the a, pictures look similar to this. So let's talk about... Uh, fan created so Let's thing. talk about what Trump wants the wall to be. All right. Uh, so it would be 1,000 miles long. Uh, and, and the other 1,500 miles that he said would be covered by natural barriers, like the terrain is so rocky or so steep. Or yeah, so, no one could I mean, ever traverse that. Yeah, yeah, yeah nobody's going to figure happen. out a way so, to get around that. So the wall, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a contiguous wall. It would actually have gaps in it. But, I mean, or there would be maybe vehicle barriers. Let's or build a Swiss cheese wall along the border. <laughs> Yeah. Which is pretty much what he's proposed. Uh, Actually, it's a fence now. So the, isn't it? the the various heights he's listed. It's, I'm confused. Have on been that between point. ten and fifty feet. Remember when they said uh, the former president of Mexico said they didn't want to build the wall or they would they would never pay for it. He said it got ten feet higher. So up to fifty feet. Uh, the most common number being thirty five feet. So Trump has kind of said well, about thirty five feet is how tall he wants the wall to be. Uh-huh. Uh huh. He described it as an impenetrable physical wall. Uh, com- composed of precast concrete plank, 30 feet, 40 feet long. So you're telling me this wall is impenetrable even to like 
drug cartels that have C4 and shit? I, I guess so. Um, it also must be aesthetically pleasing. Uh, oh. Yeah, look at it. It's beautiful. Wow, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, looks like, it looks like broken dreams or something. <laughs> I just want to go jerk off to it. It's so yeah. pretty. So, well, let's hear some facts about this. I want to fucking paint this wall with my jizz. It's so fucking so, TJ, sexy. You already know we have a lot of fencing on the border. We actually, it's not, so it's kind of a misnomer. There's nothing built. It's just, you know, it's wide open. People just run across or just swim across it. That's it. That's all they got to do. Yeah, there's already a fence, right? Uh, there's actually already already 654 miles of border fencing. All right. So the U.S.-Mexico border is about 1,933 miles long. Of that, uh, 34% already has a wall or fence in particular, parts along areas of the border that are most easily accessed by people traveling by car or on foot. Uh, so basically, 654 miles already built. Uh, so what you know, what is the rest of that land? Uh, huge mountains and rivers, <coughs> vast stretches of land that are privately owned, uh, which of course uh, the United States would have to seize through eminent domain, right? If they want to get so, especially for those of you guys in our audience who might not know what eminent domain is. Uh, that's basically the government seizing oh, land for their purposes. Oh, we're going to get stuff. to that. Oh, okay. So, um, it's already, so here it's worth noting that less than 400,000 people who were trying to cross the border were arrested in 2018. So 400,000, 400, so 400,000 yeah. people. So the border patrol was already pretty effective at catching people. Clearly. I mean, they arrested well, 400,000. Clearly people. of those 400,000 people, I mean, you know, I, I, I think probably for every one you caught, <clears throat> 10 got through. Oh, yeah. So I think there's probably that's like, you the know. Problem. That's the that's, problem. That's, you can't throw enough fucking juiced up, hopped up military guys at the border but to prevent if every actually, last person if we, getting yeah, in. Sure, some people can do it that way. Some people do cross the border that way. And, and to say the border has no issues about people crossing illegally or undocumented. Workers, we got to remember, too. It is possible to do it, of course. That 400,000 number, that's way down from... Uh, the the nineties is actually now a net migration of Mexicans back to Mexico from the United States. So more people are crossing the border to Mexico at this point. Yep. Wow. Correct. Uh, so a lot of a lot of people, a lot of Mexicans came here like the land of opportunity, so, and they're just so, like, eh, never so mind. all the fencing we talked about came from something. <laughs> so back in two thousand six, we got the Secure Fence Act, uh, and it's important to note both Republicans and Democrats joined together to vote for this uh, fencing. I mean, they don't. They didn't call it a wall. They called it a fence, uh, which included, of course, our former president Barack Obama and the presidential nominee last cycle for the Democrats, Hillary Rodden Clinton. So, it's important to note when this act was passed in two thousand six, Democrats supported this act. It was a bipartisan bill. So, this issue has not really become as divisive as it has. It, that's happened over the last you know ten twelve years that we've seen the Democratic Party reverse because they actually had no problem building this fencing as recent as two thousand six. Yep. Yeah. Is this what people want? I mean, I know this is like a Photoshop. Yeah, this is or whatever. this is another wow, fan dude. image here. But like, is this like <coughs> what is in Mexico? Titans? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, man? What are we trying to keep out at this point? Oh, God. This attack on Titan. Oh, TJ. Damn it. Yeah, TJ, dude. TJ. Do we need to have like a doll, like a jar that we each put a buck in every time this happens? <laughs> yeah, I think you're I think, right. I think it might have to happen, dude. I don't usually have uh, cash on me though. Too bad for you, dude. I love the, uh, I love the fucking um, crawl they put on it. So the President Trump oh. under budget, ahead of schedule, ten feet taller than planned. So the problem we really have with a lot of this land is that it's privately held. Uh, so in order for the government to take the land, they have to seize power, basically seize land for a bunch of private property owners. Right. Uh, how the government has abused this process to take the land has resulted in unfair payments to different people. So a lot of people have been fucked over, essentially. And there's actually still ongoing lawsuits from the 2006 of land they just took with the eminent domain. So let me ask you a hypothetical question, Scotty. Sure. Let's say you're a homeowner, right? And the government comes along and says, you know, we need the land your house is on to build some facility or something. Uh, well, basically, you get fucked. So well, you're so that you they basically they'll give you some money for it, but it might not even be a lot. And you're you have no choice but to they sell get to, to decide what fair is. And they give you a lump sum and you're basically left to go uh, yeah. on your merry way with it. Well, the idea is that basically, OK, they want to build a national park like, you know, they want to expand the freeway or whatever. You know, the greater good is that we take the land. So this basically comes from this. So the interesting thing about the, uh, the federal government is that in the 1930s, when the U.S. is in the middle of the, uh, the Great Depression, 
there was a big movement to stimulate the economy with large public works projects. So basically, think about the Hoover Dam, right? The right. new a lot of New Deal stuff. So they were they were taking these large privately owned things and saying, "Hey, we got to take this." Uh, so, so basically, kinda- because of that need, Congress passed a very special law called the Declaration of Taking Act. Mm-hmm. Uh, what that essentially did is gave the government, unlike any other government agency, it gave federal the federal government the power to quickly seize land. And when I say quickly, I mean the government sends you a letter. The next day, they take the title to your land. And that's what's called the Declaration of Taking. So they send you a letter and say, we're taking your land. So you're just like on your land chilling. You get a letter like, hey, it's the government. Uh, just FYI, we are taking your land tomorrow. And yeah. then they do. And then you're out. Yep. And that's basically, it. It, it's called just compensation or something like the long lines. So basically, it, the, the lawsuits that have, have basically sprung up from this issue. I'm sure there's been plenty. Well, of course they have. It's Pretty not, much every time it's it not can they take your land? That's already settled. It's how much are you going to be paid? Right. So you can't even argue against the land seizure on any level. No. Really, no. You're not allowed to. Hmm. The government can take it if they need it for the greater good. The greater good. Uh, Scotty, you you mentioned a a term in your uh, description there. uh, Public works project, right? The idea behind public works project is we got a lot of unemployment. So uh, we'll just put people to work on little infrastructure projects and shit. Maybe sometimes stuff that's not even necessarily needed, but whatever. It's just, it's something people can build and do. A lot of the infrastructure we have currently was built during those time right. periods. So, um, could you almost, I mean, like, would you consider the wall to be a public works project? Um, no. I wouldn't because this is something that will probably be more likely if it's built, will be built by you know, government through government contractors, basically subcontract to private contractors. So it's it's basically just a gift to the construction industry. That is an interesting angle that Trump never took on his. Like, I don't think I've ever heard him talk <coughs> about how many people are going to be put to work, work building the wall and maintaining the yeah, wall. Yeah, you think he? Do you think it would be a selling point? Right now, and, and he if, could say, once we're done building the wall, we don't send those people home to be unemployed again. We put them to work in Detroit, fixing up fucking Detroit. You know, building new roads, fixing <coughs> up old buildings. Well, that's not what they want. They want to give corporate, basically, it's more corporate welfare. They want to give handouts to big businesses that are going to build, build you know, basically bid on these projects. It's not going to be like the Army Corps of Engineers yeah. or, some, or something like, or, you know, the public works thing where it's going to be a bunch of unemployed people are going to build this shit. It's going to be skilled construction companies. Which is, you know. That's I mean, Trump, that, Trump works in real estate, so, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, I understand if you're <laughs> building something that looks even remotely like what we're looking at right here then you're not going to be able to just, like, pull homeless people off the street and have them build it, you know? like They built the fucking Hoover Dam. But that, so. that, the answer to that is education. <laughs> the answer to that is providing a means so people can learn to do well, these you jobs. Act, I mean, well, here's the thing. A lot of these jobs, yeah, you could. Like, you're thinking of the skilled parts, like the engineering and the other feats. Like, a lot of the shit, it's, like, it's just going to be someone that actually knows what they're doing. Like, you get down here and pour concrete here. Yeah, I mean, basically, you're teaching you're someone to do uh, like a few, a few tasks, sometimes even just one task right. over and over again. So you really only need a few people who actually understand what the fuck is overall going on, uh, as long as they can convey to people what their specific tasks are. Yeah, which yeah, are know. generally very <laughs> simple tasks, just backbreaking work generally. So I don't know. I mean, it seems to me like since Trump wants this wall so much, I mean, it's it's interesting that he hasn't ever gone for that angle well, and been well, like, the way, this th- is going to be a public works thing and we're going to put people to work and all this stuff. I mean, like, you think that would go so well because he's a fake populist and everything. But I guess that's the key word is right. fake. If he was a real oh, populist, well, he probably would do something like that. A number of supporters like probably wouldn't even like that, in a sense. He'd be like, that's a big government coming in. Okay, number one is that no wall prototypes are even approaching this. This wall, it looks like it'd be at least 100 feet high. This looks like, I'm, look, I'm looking at a fucking picture of Endor or that's something. That's what I'm saying. You know? This like, looks like a, like, a, like a wall the Empire would fucking <laughs> built on Endor for, for a facility or that's, something. So that's what people... People in in the fucking uh, Donald camp. I'm sure this meme has its origins on uh, the Donald subreddit. This is not what they're proposing to build. I'm just imagining if this is what they want, then they're literally like masturbating to something that looks like it'd be built by the Galactic Empire. It's like, yeah, yes. So another big oh. problem with this wall is like, yeah. So let's say they even build the wall. Look, that's a big, beautiful wall right there. Big, beautiful but wall. The problem with walls is, can't you just go underneath them? No. I mean, that's pretty simple, right? No. no. So let's have a list of the tunnels they found. A list of the tunnel? They ain't found no tunnels. Yeah, there's a, there's actually a... What? Oh, man. What is this? Lies. 
damned vile lies. No, fake news, fake news. As Trump pushes for a wall, authorities keep finding drug tunnels under the U.S.-Mexico border. Oh, no, man. One tunnel is about 50 feet long, unfinished, and stretches across uh, two countries. Uh, It starts along the drainage channels that a U.S. border town shares with Mexico and abruptly ends underneath a parking lot in Arizona. Uh Another runs 80 feet, also unfinished. Uh, its opening was found inside an abandoned store in the Mexico uh, border yeah, city. Yeah, so someone of just Nogales. walks in a seemingly abandoned store and they walk out in the U.S. Uh, a third one was 30 feet, found in the same place. Uh, these tunnels, which authorities suspect were built to smuggle illegal contraband or people across the border, were found within the <gasps> or past people? month. So you're saying people could go under any sort of physical barrier? I can't believe that. I can't believe it. So. <clears throat> Essentially, that part of the wall would be totally ineffectual. And uh, for those people who think that these uh, tunnels are not... There's a couple tunnels. Or they're just like a joke. Or, oh, there's not too many of them. Um, there's funny. a shit ton of these tunnels. Yeah, if you, if you hope the uh, San Diego Tribune I want to, Tribune uh, Journal one. Let's see. Oh, here. snap. This is USA Today, so I don't know. Where's the San Diego Tribune? Oh, yeah. this List is, of tunnels found. This is it, right? No, that's not No. It. Well, what the fuck? That's the Washington Post. What the fuck? Here we go. I want because I wanted people to see. So the first sheer of all, scale. I just want I want people to just look at this tunnel. This looks like a prof- this is a professional operation. Well, oh, because I mean, here's the thing: you can't. You have to be to a certain extent because you can't just go digging seventy feet underground without oxygen. No, right. So you have to pump oxygen. You have to have light. You have to have sufficient uh, ability to move the dirt that you're excavating. I mean, look, out, they have a track. <laughs> they have a they, fucking track. So that's why they there. have a track. And the track is dual purpose in these types of <coughs> tunnels too. It's used during the excavation to continuously get all the crap out. Because where are you going to put it? You're underground. You can't just throw the dirt over your shoulder. You bury yourself. Right. So you got to get the dirt out. So, but once it's finished, it's used to quickly traverse <coughs> the tunnel. So you've got a little fucking engine that pulls it down the tunnel, carries the drugs, carries the big old batch of people. It's quick. It's quiet. 70 feet underground. Look at this shit. For every one of these that these people find, there's probably a dozen or more of them. (coughs) Oh, yeah. So this is a list of uh, tunnels found on the southwest United States border since 1990. And this is a... uh, Basically compiled. Uh, I think I think it says there have been at least 180 found. I think the most recent figures I saw were actually upwards of 220. Uh, Jesus, just keep scrolling down. A lot of people just see. I mean, like we're not even going to cover all these. Just keep going. I just wanted to look at some of them. Just, yep, uh, yep, just yep, and it goes on oh and it's on still going. and on. Just keep going. Yep, <laughs> yep, keep going. I just want people to show people. And not all of these were finished. I mean, some of them were discovered before they were finished. Right. They're, they're, they're unfinished also. But this just shows you the sheer number we're talking about. And the determination of people to cross that border, no matter how many fucking how, troops we put at it. How big the wall is, how, how tall the, the wall, wall is, how impenetrable, so, how it's uh, how it's unclimbable. Or no matter how many drones are patrolling our airspace and shit. For those of you looking at this, just remember, this represents the tunnels that have been discovered. Right. So Which, how many undiscovered tunnels are unless there? Unless you want to take the tact that all of these tunnel digging people are just <laughs> hapless and none of them have ever quite succeeded. You know what I mean? That they've been discovered before any contraband was run through them, of uh, course. A tunnel equipped with electros- electricity and a ventilation system was found linking an empty business in San Luis, Arizona with an ice plant in Mexico. <laughs> I mean, yeah, a legitimate business. Right. Um... Incomplete tunnel, more than 100 feet long, 481 foot tunnel. I saw one up here that was like a mile and a half long tunnel. Oh, yeah. I mean, some of these tunnels are huge. Dude, that's one of the ways that El Chapo got out when he was down in Mexico. Was like, (laughs) while he was in prison, he had his dudes buy a piece of land that was adjacent to the prison. And they spent like a year and a half digging an elaborate (laughs) tunnel underneath the prison. Right up into his cell. He just went down. There was a motorcycle in there. He fired it up and rode like fucking hell. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Yeah, so dude. So you guys want to go inside of a tunnel? Mexicans know how to dig a tunnel, <laughs> you know? That tunnel they've rats. Got that, they, they've got that shit down, and they're not going to stop. Our border is Swiss cheese. 
Let's take a look inside. Oh, sorry, this is fake news, though. Has been growing. Hundreds of miles of fencing, border patrol agents crisscrossing the remote terrain. Let's go into the damn tunnel. Uh, drug trafficking organization to stay undetected, and it's by tunneling, they will. Yep. This is usually a high dollar, high, you know, risk reward enterprise. It's a lot of, a lot of stuff that they got to move in a relatively short amount of time. Lenore says the tunnels are used to move large packs of marijuana and cocaine and are off. God bless you, Mexico. Often lined with electrical power and ventilation. This one had a rail system in it. How long does it take to build something like this? Depending on the... For Mexicans, a couple hours. <laughs> yeah. and see of the digging crew, they can go really fast, really far. And is it by hand, like shovels? Yeah, it's or? basically almost exclusively by hand with power tools. When these things started popping up... So he didn't give it a specific time frame, but from what I understand from his answer... Quickly. It sounds like it's pretty quick. Yeah, it's not a long process. <laughs> so if not I only do they build these tunnels... They build them fast. Yeah. They build them way di way deeper than Trump's wall is. I'm sure Trump's wall is going to be buried to an extent. Uh, about, well, I mean, obviously there's varying designs, but uh, I've heard between six and ten feet. That's not going to stop any of this. Well, no, they're going <laughs> to That's a deeper. joke to them. They're, I mean, some of these tunnels are already like, what, you said 70 feet underground? Yeah, yeah. they're popping out in abandoned <clears throat> warehouses and shit in American cities. Fucking houses nobody knows about, backyards, empty fields. Like, how are you going to cover every fucking square mile of ground on both sides of the U.S.-Mexican border for these fucking Swiss cheese holes? It's just it's nonsensical to think that you're going to stop <coughs> anything with these walls. I wonder this if is just two, one way of getting. I wonder if wall. two Mexican digging crews have ever run into each other in the earth. Like, oh shit, you guys are digging a tunnel that way. We're digging a tunnel this way. <laughs> yeah. You know, what a coincidence. <laughs> wow, fortunate. <laughs> Let's help each other. <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> oh god, hideous. Just hideous. Maybe what we need to counteract <laughs> this is. A new fucking subdivision of the Border Patrol called the Mole Men. And it's their ah. job to dig tunnels into Mexico, but like crisscross wise, so they're looking for other fucking tunnels under the ground constantly. Yeah, dude. The underground ops, dude. dude. I, I have it, the dude. The Mole Men. <laughs> we just declare it eminent domain within maybe like, we'll figure out like how, what's the longest feasible tunnel. All the land, just we'll, we'll fucking raise that. Eminent Domain sees all the land. It's yeah, San Diego. just dig a, a tunnel directly across. And then we just dig a tunnel so deep, there's no way. So they try to dig out. We, oh, we see them, we shoot them. Yeah, yeah, we do. We'll fucking genetically engineer uh, the graboids from fucking Tremors. To, to live in that tunnel. Yeah, and, and to patrol, patrol the border, dude. Dude, they'd have a constant source of food, too. Yeah, 400,000 like, people. That sounds like tink, enough to tink. feed the fucking uh, the sandworms dude, guy. Essay, I think we broke through. It's <laughs> night. <laughs> You know, like, like, oh shit! It's a tunnel. It's another tunnel. Go back. Ah! Let's make Mexican tremors, dude. Yeah, let's fucking do it. Or any other absurd number of ways to stop. There's there. The point is, I think, as we go along here, there's no point. There, there's no way to stop this. No feasible way. Never say never, Paul. Oh, well, I mean, one of the we can talk about. It could look. be done if, but like, how the, the problem is. That in order to actually secure the border, in to the extent that these Trump people want it, right, it would be such an expensive proposition that our country would basically be able to focus its resources on almost nothing else. Right, because you'd need seismic sensors on every square inch of that wall. <coughs> you'd need a uh, uh, to to build over those impassable terrain places and build and have seismic sensors. You'd have to guard all the ports. Yep. You'd have to allow no pieces in the country. You'd have to inspect all the cargo that inspect came in. Inspect every legal piece ports. of cargo that comes across the border by hand. You'd have I mean like it, yeah, you're right. It could be done, but it would be the most massive protectionist swing in the history of fucking history. And it would be meaningless because it's all to solve basically a fake problem. Right. Here's, here's the thing too that's going to happen because like uh Trump has even said in many of his speeches a lot of it's going to rely on natural barriers, right? <coughs> yeah. So what's going to happen is, one, people are, going to, are just going to be funneled to more remote areas. So that's a big problem with this that happens, too, is people start crossing these uh, these deserts. They start crossing areas that are, more, like I said, more remote. So there's a greater chance of them dying, not only on the journey there, 
But the fact that eventually the, the, some people are going to get through these gaps anyways, because a lot of the border right now, they're not like I said, they're not proposing building a continuous wall. So there's still going to be gaps in the system regardless, unless you were talking about building a contiguous wall, which Trump is not. Man, they're going to go over it. They can just climb it. You got a dude at every place on the wall. What's to stop them from just building a ramshackle <laughs> well, what they're saying series is, of ladders? What they're saying is that they're going to make the wall uh, unclimbable. What about what if they, what if I just bring a bunch of ladders that we can strap together? Is there going to be a, a literally an American soldier well, in eye shot of every inch of one of these pieces of walls well, that, is going to stop uh, me? Of course not. Well, I mean, obviously what will happen a lot of times, too, is, it, is like if a ladder is able to be put on the wall and you tie a rope to that, you'll just be able to go, climb up and then go down. Right. That's the point. Just... Or there, or like we said, the bear, the wall won't even be there because the terrain is so rough. It doesn't make practical sense to build the wall there, so you just walk through, and it'll just be a difficult journey. Do you think the wall is so popular with Trump's base because dumb people can't figure out a way to get around the wall? <laughs> Maybe. And they just, huh? uh, they honestly think that, like, well, man, if I was trying to get into somebody's land and I came up on a thirty-five foot wall, I'd just walk away. What I honestly, I honestly think that like many issues. Uh, in America today, a lot of it is just symbolic bullshit. They just want the declaration of the wall. They don't actually think it's going to fucking work. Right. It's just Isn't more about, about, is it it's about more giving about Trump just, a win at this point, too? Yeah, also to, to give Trump a win and also just to say to Mexico, like, fuck you, you damn we immigrants. We built a wall. We built a fucking wall to keep you out. You ain't welcome here, motherfuckers. I mean, and we've seen it in Europe, too. I mean, like, like you hear people dying across the Mediterranean Sea because they closed the land routes through Europe. So it just all that happens is if you make these certain areas so <coughs> fortified, because, look, if you fortify a wall, and like you, Paul, you said, and it's heavily there's a heavy police and military presence, then, of course, no one's going to try to cross there. Right. It would be suicide. So they just go elsewhere on the wall. Right. So, I mean, it's like. Then you gotta. Then you gotta. You got So if you even if we secured every inch of the fucking space that we share, a border with Mexico, like urban areas. Let's say. Let's right. say we totally sec we secure, we secure that. it all. Even if we did that, that would leave our ports. <laughs> that would leave <clears throat> our airspace completely. Yep. You know what I mean? So it's just a silly fucking problem. We know that people can mask. It, it's not even hard to mask the the radar signature of a small plane. No, we know it's that not. dude that shot up fucking Vegas yeah. was uh, he had adept one, at doing it. He had it in one of his planes. All so how you think people in Mexico can't figure out that technology? You think no. they can't fly right over the fucking wall Absolutely in a little prop not. plane and bring each other over so here? I, I'm gonna ask you guys a question. How do you think the majority of people that are coming to the United States and staying illegally are coming into the country? You think it's that you think they're well? I, I happen to know how they're coming. Uh, it's it's visa overstays, right? Yep. So. Most undocumented immigrants don't what do we call, what we call quote unquote sneak across the border, right? Uh, the majority of immigrants in the U.S. without authorization first enter the country legally, first enter the country legally. Just want to say that again, and then overstayed their visas. The Center for Migration Studies said, "I'm I'm terrified of making this argument to conservatives because I think that their reaction is probably just gonna be like, well, we need to close down the visa program too, obviously.' Yeah, it's like I don't want to put that idea in your head. Exactly, <laughs> you know. So it's like I'm reluctant to even bring it up because I'm just like, oh, you're gonna go the you're wrong way. You're already with this. dangerously well, close that kind to of the Mao idea? Zedong here. So yeah, wasn't that kind of the idea behind the um, the so-called Muslim ban? You know, <coughs> yeah. Anyways, <coughs> that basically you would just stop immigration from those countries. Uh, so the, the, Center, bad the Center for Migration Studies said in a 2017 report that crossing the border is not the way the large majority of persons are now becoming undocumented. It reported that two thirds of undocumented immigrants entered the U.S. legally and then simply overstayed their visas. So if you're so basically Make the punishment getting their heads chopped off in the public square, whatever, <laughs> whatever city they're caught near. That'll stop them coming. So if you pull up the USA Today thing, uh, so this is how many foreigners overstayed their uh, visas. Let's see, see that. if I can find is this USA it's, it's the USA Today one. Which one is that? This one? Yep. There we go. So more than 600,000 foreigners overstayed U.S. visas in 2017. Whoopsie. So that's so the wall doesn't even uh, account for the 600,000 people or two-thirds of undocumented people that entered the United States at the time period. So That's why I always laugh when I see Trump be like, the wall will be 100% effective. 100%. Yeah. 
Wrong. I can't think of no way to get around a big old wall like that. Can yeah. you? How about you come here legally and then you just hey, half, hey, half the time I can't even back. find my way out in this damn house. I take it back, dude. I, I feel like I'm impugning rednecks. Rednecks are notoriously resourceful fucking people. Yeah, so you, you know. So like, these are just like slack jawed Trump huh? morons. Trump good. Uh, Trump. Gold like anybody with a fucking brain on their head on knows the that you can go over, under, or around a goddamn wall and that it's not going to keep people the fuck out. Or through. Or I mean, through. Like, or through. Yeah, what's to stop them? <laughs> this wall does not include sensor technology. So what's to stop them from finding a spot of the wall that's not patrolled very often and just digging through it with a fucking pickaxe uh, like they do under it? Here's another thing. <laughs> the elements. A fucking big storm rolls through. I mean, like, it's impossible for a hurricane to hit Texas. Yeah. I mean, that's possible as well. So, oh, or it's on the Rio Grande. It's on the river. Flood, flooding happens. The wall's part of the wall collapses. Oh, there's a hole in the wall. Maintenance. Oh, they don't maintain the wall good, uh, well enough. So, oh, guess what? Yeah, I wonder, did you pull anything in your research about what the maintenance cost on the wall would be? Oh, we're going to get to the cost at the end. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> not only is it subvertible, I mean, like, there's just 10,000 fucking ways to get around this fucking wall. I mean, come on. It is a concrete barrier. No matter how you s describe it, no matter how much you reinforce it. And it probably wouldn't have been built as a concrete barrier, by the way. Right. It's just, it's a, it's a fucking surmount. Like, human beings, since the, since the wall was invented by them, have been jumping over and going around and under and through them. And what makes anybody think that we're going to stop now? I mean, look, the <coughs> medieval cities, that's how the cities used to keep themselves protected from outside invasion was they would have walls. And people and still smuggled people and illicit goods and, uh, you know. But the problem with those, even even if, let's say, the wall can't be. criminals in and out of these fucking places. Well, let's even say, like, you know, the city's all bored up, you know, like, it, there's a siege going on. Then it's like you, then nothing can get in. Right. If we were preparing for a war with Mexico, I might see some merit in a wall. Yeah, it'd be a good military yeah. position to have. But, it but wouldn't to stop, stop them. Im the, to stop the trickle of immigration, it's useless. I mean, I think it'd be pretty useless against a modern military too. Prop well, you know, a tank would blow a hole in that <coughs> wall big enough for all of Mexico. But military if you have people, if you had dudes stationed on top of it, you know, it, it would, and it would if, even <laughs> if you blew a hole in it, you'd co it concentrate people to trying to get through, so and you could have a point to focus up. on. It's just interesting. So more than six hundred thousand foreign travelers who leave. But then again, the I think States. drone striking the shit out of it would probably be more effective yeah. than well, yeah, a fucking I mean, wall anyway. Yeah. In twenty seventeen, overstayed their visas and remained in the country by the end of the year, according to the Department of Homeland Security data released Tuesday. So if you go down, Trump basically wants to do a biometric system to track people better, which hey, I mean, why not? If they're coming legally, we we already know and there's no such thing as privacy if you live in the developed world to begin with. No, we don't want to fucking create a free account. My email is my passport. Woo, a free account with so USA reason, Today. So we know a Go big away. reason why people are coming here. And, like, let's be honest. And it, it's fucking the jobs. So a big part of this, uh, why a lot of Mexicans came to the United States originally, was to work, right? Mm hmm So, and this goes back to the 1980s. I mean, obviously, illegal immigration goes further than that. But this is talking about the law. So before the 1980s, there were no laws about hiring legal or unauthorized immigrants. So even 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 someone that came to the U.S. legally, there's no law that even dealt with that. Uh, it was only after the Immigration Reform and Control Act of 1986 that amnesty that employers had limits on who they could hire, uh, and that was basically it. Uh, but everyone knew that was a big loophole, uh, big enough to drive a truck through, because Congress could only sanction employers that they knowingly. Hired undocumented immigrants. So as long as they have any sort of yeah. plausible deniability, it doesn't. So really as long matter. as the um, uh, employer presents papers and the employer checks them to see if they look fa uh, facially valid, then it's fine, because the employers basically have deniability, uh, and that's it. So uh, at, at one point, so back in the eighties, it was a, it was there was nothing wrong. You could hire illegal immigrants at will. There was no law to deal with. No it. law. Even legal it. immigrants, even people that came here the right way and went through all the proper channels right. and got visas or green cards, like there, was, <clears throat> it wasn't a fact. But even once a law was passed, the law was basically like, well, you know, you got plausible. If as long as you have plausible deniability, we're not going to do anything. So to basically, you. In, this, in this country now, it's like we, we have a wink, wink, like, oh, they gave me a social security card. It must have been valid. Oh, they gave me a oh, look. They gave me a document that says they are who they are. But basically, uh, 
this farce is a two-way street because it's what immigrants want. Even at the risk of being underpaid, mistreated, put in danger, otherwise exploited, they accept this deal because they're going to make more money than they would have made in their country of origin. And of course, uh, one of the people, one of the businessmen out there who has uh, benefited from our lax yeah. immigration laws. I wonder if there's anyone that we knew huh. that had benefited from this. Maybe anyone was, we uh, could find. Uh, you got any guesses, Paul? This guy. Victorina Morales has made President Trump's bed, cleaned his toilet, and dusted his crystal golf trophies, according to a Blockbuster story in the New York Times. Blockbuster because Victorina Morales is also an undocumented immigrant <gasps> who spent five years working at Trump's bed, Mr. No! Court, where he spent seven <laughs> what? days no! in the presidency. <coughs> Donald Trump dun, dun, dun. hired an undocumented immigrant. To work cleaning up his fucking hotel. No way, dude. And his, oh, his golf course, excuse me. His I'm sorry. I'm sorry. shit, too. I'm sure she's and the only one, shit? too. Just the only one that slipped. It was an unfortunate one-time mistake. Yeah, one-time mistake, right? Oh, I, I guess we have to look a little bit more. Let's, uh... Now, there are more than 12 million undocumented immigrants in the United States. All and President evil. Trump has attacked them for political gain since the day he launched his campaign. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. Dude, we need a giant TV that we could just command. Dude, I want a TV I can command. That's just a dude that hits play. They're rapists. When... And yeah, some, we need that guy. I assume are good people. But the types of businesses Trump's built his fortune on? <laughs> Rump. Hotels and hospitality, construction and casinos Rump. are notorious Rump. for having significant Rump. percentages of undocumented workers. Construction and hospitality. <laughs> you know what thought two of? Two and three. You know they have the fucking. You know they have like the like the. Br 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 I'm just thinking of like. Br 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 every time Trump walks on stage, br 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 the baby elephant. Yeah. Walk, dude. <laughs> in agriculture, according to a study by Pew. In fact, you Trump's say. flagship tower in New York City was built by undocumented oh! Polish workers, and then Trump stiffed them on their pay, according to court documents. Of course. And for a staunch advocate of America First. Trump and the properties that bear his name keep hiring foreign guest workers. What? From Florida's Mar-a-Lago to the delicious Trump winery in Virginia. All this speaks to the larger hypocrisy of our system, where businesses depend on undocumented workers, foreign and seasonal, while politicos and owners vilify and insult them often. But behind the scenes of Bedminster, Ms. Morales describes a very different Donald Trump than the one we hear on the stump. He was demanding but generous, she told the New York Times, helping her clean a window that was out of reach, tipping her lavishly and telling her that, quote, Guatemalans are hardworking people. But lately, President Trump has been threatening the government of Guatemala, promising to curtail the, quote, massive foreign <coughs> aid we send there unless the country stops what he calls the caravans of asylum seekers. The Trump Organization's response to the revelation of an undocumented immigrant on its rolls is as severe as is predictable. predictable. Quote, Severe to the device of our production. <laughs> what was that? I was about, he just had, it just, his news robot chip had a fucking <laughs> So, uh, uh, and, that, and that kind of brings to another issue about this. It's like, <laughs> so we hear about these caravans, right? So, okay, the yeah. caravan's going to come, and we got to stop it. Uh, but Trump knows that once they reach the border, that they have the legal right under national law and treaties to ask for asylum. So yet another way... Through the legal process, most of these people don't try to sneak in. They try to claim asylum in these countries. Like, be it the U.S., be it wherever. Some people actually stayed in Mexico. But a lot of people continued on to the United States and requested asylum. Now, you can make an argument, hey, they're economic migrants at that point, or if they're, they're safe in Mexico. But it's hard to argue that Mexico is uh, actually a very safe country when it has one of the highest uh, murder rates in the world. I mean, they're run by drug... I mean, it's a fucking, also a narco state. I and mean, what was it like? There were like 50,000 murders in Mexico last year. Not exactly a super safe country. I'm not saying our country is, is perfect by any stretch of the imagination. We have mass shootings every fucking week, it seems. But I mean, I would, I would venture to say we're a much safer country to live in than uh, Mexico. Yeah. <clears throat> You're safer on the average American street than you are on the average Mexican street, I would say. That is racist. Oh, sorry. I mean, never mind. <clears throat> it's all the same. But, you know, another thing we haven't talked about either is drugs. Drugs. I like drugs. Drugs. I mean, I know everyone here likes drugs, so this th th this part of the thing is called drugs are bad, dude. Drugs are drugs bad. Drugs are fucking bad. Ooh, what's this? <laughs> Fact-checking Trump what? officials. Most drugs enter U.S. through legal ports no. of entry, not vast open border. Oh, So drugs, shit. I'm, I'm actually not going to read this article, but uh, drugs are entering the U.S. Uh, across the southern border are more, most often hidden in legal shipments. Right. Uh, Trump has suggested that the Which, flow of heroin... What percent of our, 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 our um, 
par- cargo, cargo containers are uh, searched at this point. I, I didn't look that up, but I would say from what I've the just periphery research that I saw it was maybe ten percent, maybe if not less. Not if I don't think it was even that much. I think, but in some cases, it went up as high as that. Okay. Go ahead and keep uh, talking about that. We'll okay. Look that up. So Trump suggested that the flow of heroin to the United States would be staunched uh, by his border wall. Uh, so basically, ninety percent of the heroin enters through this uh, through the southern border, which Trump has said that's correct. However, according to the Drug Enforcement Agency, illicit drugs are smuggled in the United States in concealed compartments within passenger vehicles or commingled with legitimate goods on tractor trailers. Yeah, I mean this is uh, a so, constant issue too. So, in other words, a wall wouldn't stop most heroin from entering the country, and arguably, resources spent on the wall would divert uh, from other enforcement mechanisms, such as more officers and technology at the ports of entry to scan vehicles for drugs. So, if you're if you're really actually truly worried about that, I hate to tell you, but that's just going to take away like, valuable resources from the people that are actually looking for the drugs. Well, which I don't think they even should be. I think <clears throat> they should just be legal. Not only this, but it's not just drugs that get smothered, smuggled across these ports of entry oh it's people yeah i mean like I, we covered a story way back when i think on dp about people that got found in a trailer just left there and a bunch of yeah, by the coyotes, been, yeah yeah had been just left there <laughs> for like two or three days before they were found uh although some people argue with the figure about five percent of uh our uh, cargo is searches and there's so about one in every 20 shipments. So there's a hundred, yeah. so it's basically like not even a t- like if you walked up to a gambling game with those odds, you'd play it all day, every day, yeah, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, 95 5, you might five percent chance to lose. <laughs> it's like, yeah, what? why wouldn't you play that game? Yeah, uh, so like the, I said, there, there's some dispute is, about it, but but yeah, but yet again, an, an, another uh Trump claim that. Like, yes, 90% of the heroin uh, that enters the U.S. does come from Mexico, but most of it comes in through legal ports of entry. So it's really uh, building the wall would be totally ineffectual and actually would damage the drug enforcement efforts uh, that are currently ex- they currently exist. I mean, not that I am really actually opposed to heroin being well, legal. Dude, I was so. watching when we, TJ and I took our girlfriends down to that aquarium so they could see the penguins and shit. We were sitting and kind of people watching, and those giant fucking cargo ships come by that just go on forever laden down with those giant truck containers or cars in some cases like new cars you'd see them stacked with just new vehicles and shit and you're just like i wonder if the trunk of every one of those vehicles has been manually searched for fucking heroin well i mean drugs or people or anything contraband well remember during the vietnam war you know who smuggled most of the drugs back from southeast asia yeah the, mili- the United States military. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't think the border patrol would also? Here's another thing: people in the there's some people in the government that are corrupt. Uh oh. So guess what? Uh, a lot of these drugs are going to be allowed through. They're going to be bribed because they're if they're, they're people making thirty or forty grand a year, they're going to be offered a fucking paid hey many times that to say just look the other way at the port. So customs, you know, whatever ICE, uh, whoever's doing this enforcement action is going to let people through. There's going to be corruption. It's it, it's obvious. Yeah. So, uh, so even with even with all this, you know, money spent on infor- law enforcement, there's bribable fucking law enforcement that's going to go. Okay, bring them in. We don't give a shit. Oh, you're going to pay me five hundred thousand dollars to bring in ten million dollars worth of heroin. Sounds like a good deal for you. I mean, the undertaking of searching, at, like for a country the size of us and as hungry as us for consumer goods and import of, you know, it would hold food. our economy. Yeah, it would absolutely. It would it would cause our economy to come to a grinding halt. It would be the biggest public works project ever. It would employ it, millions of people. Dude, in a country like ours, that's a huge consumerist country that we import so much stuff. I mean, it would, be, it would basically be like this. Like, you'd order something, dude, and it'd be like, oh, I ordered this uh, part from China or from wherever. You know, oh, you ordered a computer? Well, it's going to be six weeks to get it, Paul. Okay, so even if we did some kind of effort like that... And it did stop more of the drugs from entering the country. Eventually, as the drug, as there, as the you, as you uh, slow the flow of drugs into America, eventually these inspectors are going to start realizing, like, wow, if I just take this shit that I found, right? These cartels have got millions of dollars <coughs> just buried out in the fucking wasteland in Mexico. That I tell them, give me half a million, and I'll just let them through with some drugs. Win win, right? Yeah, or even to just be like. Uh, <laughs> Like you know, we know that the border patrol has been bribed before by drug cartels. Of Tons of them have taken. I mean, like people 
you, you're always going to find corruption within every system. So even if you have that system where it's like, we're going to just inspect everything, shit will still get through. Yes. Of course. Because you're always going to find someone, some way to game the system. You're going to find someone who's on your fucking payroll that's willing to take money from you to fucking it let take, shit through. It would take the here's, dome. Here's the, here's the reality. It's whack-a-mole. <clears throat> Enforce more at the ports. Okay, now, now, now we'll have people that run around ports. Okay, uh, deal with that. Blockade. Oh, they're not. Are they? Are they? You know, basically looking at the airspace. Unless there's no weaknesses, absolutely no dome, weakness dude. in your system. An impenetrable yeah. energy barrier around the entire United States, where nothing, nothing can comes be, in, nothing right. goes out. Yeah, beyond that, yeah, this As is stupid. As it passes through the shield, <clears throat> it's scanned, and if any contraband is found, it's, it's just the shield turns back on, it cuts it in half. Wow. Damn, Paul. Boom. <laughs> Solved, dude. Solved. Solved it. If you got a problem, yo, Paul, solve it. Yep. Let's put me in charge, man. So, I mean, <clears throat> I know I all feel about polls, and you know, polls can definitely be wrong, but look at, let's get some polling on the wall. So how do the American people as a whole feel about the wall? Let's see. This is from, this looks like, oh, this is Pew. Um, let's see. Uh, when was this? This is uh, 2017. 2017. So that's a while back. Uh, so opinions might have changed a little bit. I sure. Don't know. I mean, they definitely are evolving. On, uh, on so uh, oppose the wall. Uh, sixty-two percent favor the wall. Thirty-five percent, um, percent who say blank would ultimately pay if the U.S. builds a wall. Seventy percent think the United States would pay. Sixteen percent think Mexico would pay. Now those are the creme de la creme of fucking idiots right there. Yeah, yeah they dude. literally believe Mexico is going to pay. If for you it. believed, <clears throat> dude, I would. If you believe Trump, if you believe that the wall should be built, you're an idiot. If you believe that Mexico is going to pay for the wall, you are an idiot among idiots. Well, yeah. I mean, those two polls juxtaposed against one another show that. Right. Because it looks like even a lot of people who favor the wall know that kn America know is that gonna America is going to pay right. for this fucking wall if it happens, dude. <laughs> the, that 16% of salty retards. I mean, like, that's Mexico, do it, nearly a fifth of please, people Mexico. polled, which means probably nearly a fifth of Americans literally believe the idea that Mexico is going to pay for us to have a wall to keep them out. Dude, I would say that that number is about right. 16 to 20% of Americans just believe whatever they're told, are looking for a demagogue to tell them how to live and give them all their opinions. We need to start appealing to that market. What kind of crazy solution to a non-problem can we come up with to fucking get these idiots <laughs> right? on our side? Because they're a force to be reckoned with in this fucking so country. Maybe my dome, dude. The dome, dude. Fuck the wall. Build the dome. Yeah. Make America domed again. <laughs> we'll try it. Let's do. We'll do some fucking uh, market research a on that. A beautiful dome. A beautiful, glorious, powerful Look, dome. The dome is so beautiful. <laughs> Look, you're gonna. See, and the best part about the dome is you're not gonna see the dome. The dome's just gonna be there protecting you at all exactly. times. Exactly. The dome, dude. How many people can sneak into a football game? Not many, because it's a dome. <laughs> <laughs> it work on idiots. Yeah! <laughs> so, keep up the New York Times. Uh, uh, I don't read the New York fucking wow. lot. The, what well, is you it? don't read any failing New York Times here. The, the wall is not pop. Yeah, oh. according to the lying New Thanks, York Nate. establishment. Nate, times. was it Nate Con? Yeah, Nate Con there. Yeah, he's con. Con us. Let's see this fuck. I want to. This is the person whose opinion you have chosen. Oh, to take I don't believe. Oh, look. At, nope. Dude, it's Scotty. Whoa. What the hell, dude? It's it is. just Scotty with brown hair. It's what the 16 fuck? 16 year old Scotty it's with 16. a brown dye job. Dude, it's me. I went back in time and became a fucking journalist for the New York Times, dude. That's what like a, the fuck? When Scotty had dark hair, he literally it looked like that, dude. And I, I of course, here I have no beard. Wow. I must have went down a different rabbit hole in my life. Scotty right? even wore those kind of glasses when I he did, was like dude. 16. This is 16-year-old oh. me, dude. This is crazy. This is just Scotty when he dyed his hair black and our uncle's black husband was like, black is beautiful, Scotty, but not when died. Not when died. Not when died, bro. <laughs> what the hell? This is crazy. <laughs> Fucking 16-year-old Scotty. Whoa. Went on to become a fucking went journalist. Went on to somehow become journalist for the New York Times, Nate Cohn or Con, Probably Con, I guess. Con. Con. All right. 
Uh, by insisting on a border wall, President Trump is emphasizing blah, blah, blah. Let's just take a look at the data here. Um, so in a midterm analysis, a majority of voters oppose the wall in states worth nearly 400 electoral votes. So uh, let's see. Uh, this is percent supporting a border wall. So the states that are purple support the wall. The states that are more brownish do not. So not surprisingly, the West Coast, uh, lower levels of support. It's pretty crazy that West Virginia is really high, dude. Oh, yeah. Why does Hawaii get to weigh in on this? <laughs> I don't know. Don't build the wall, brah. Hey, what, man. What I'm we intru- don't want you to build that wall over there. I want to know. Land. What I'm really curious about is why North and South Dakota way up here are so <laughs> concerned about the border wall down here. Well, I mean, there's a lot of farmland in North and South Dakota. I need to stay out. Stay the Stay fuck out. Which means there's a lot of uh, migrant workers working up there. So they probably are dealing with it. You know what I mean? Florida actually has... But you it, think California then would be crazy. No, I'll tell you what. Florida's actually pretty low, though. Note. I'm surprised about that. Most of the South is pretty like, you're like, nope, we don't want it. They're I'm surprised like, Louisiana is not darker purple than it is. Well, I mean, you know, there's some... Uh, co- you know Louisiana no is rotting from the inside, but You know what? Right? It says That's no true. FNNVA survey was conducted in Alaska, Louisiana, North Carolina. Oh, North so it's just gray. Okay. So Louisiana have, used to be a proud town. So it's, Louisiana is probably like proud state. S- scarlet purple. So uh, Yeah, I would guess so. But uh, it's been subverted. The wall has been consistently unpopular with voters opposed by around a 20-point margin over months we of need to build uh, the, wall. The, uh, the national survey. Build it quickly. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So this is voters' view. views yep. of the border wall track their approval of Trump. Okay. So uh, so the wall... So Trump basically is the wall. Maybe this yeah. is the type of shit that his people are showing him. Like, look, so as goes the wall, so goes you. Because it pretty much... It seems to be <laughs> his defining issue. Because look at it. It does. It Like, the people that approve of him also approve of the wall and... When they start disapproving, I mean, they start look, disapproving of the wall. It's hard not to look at that. I mean, look at the opposed wall, then support of the wall. So it's like when Trump's approval ratings, uh, they mirror go one up. another. Yeah, I mean, it, so it's obvious. Well, I mean, look, he was called to account by Ann Coulter, who's now an enemy of Trump, and a lot of other people on the fucking right. When it was like, oh, I don't, well, it seemed like the minute he was going to get wishy washy on the wall, was suddenly like, nope. Now Trump's backing down from the wall. Dude, I love this brief period right here of like, let's give him a chance. Yeah. <laughs> let's give that him a chance. That was us. Mind. I know. I mean, hey, I, I I would I don't I stand by it, but I just love how quickly the chance is like, yeah. nope, don't think so. Yep. It didn't take long. It was like went from like this is the let's give him a chance point. <laughs> the circus cavalcade of embarrassments was like fast and furious. And right then at the a, pretty much immediately it was like, yep. never but, mind. Nope. But this you, was terrible. But if you see support for the wall has kind of crept up a little bit at least. I mean, and uh, Trump disapproval has creeped down a little from its high around here. Well, the you know, the wall is on an uptick right now in funding and stuff. You know, we're just now getting into it. So, yeah. Build that wall. As goes the Build wall, that goes wall. Trump. Build that wall. Build that wall. Basically, this article just makes the case that well, in the states where like Trump would actually need to win, there's that's not a lot of support for the wall. If the wall becomes a defining issue, then it's going to hurt Trump in a general election. Right. Because uh, the wall, like key states like Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan, that he won last yeah. time. Yeah, they're not overwhelmingly. Don't really seem overwhelmingly wall you know, oriented. Nor does Florida. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the swing states are not super wall excited. So that's why Trump needs to fucking do, you know, he needs to get back on that pseudo populism bandwagon that won him last time. So who's going to pay for that fucking wall, TJ? Who's going to? Mexico. Who's going to pay? Mexico. Yeah, play it, Mexico. man. Mexico. Mexico. Don't chant Mexico. I would say Mexico is going to pay for it. Obviously, I never said this, and I never meant they're going to write out a check. Bum, 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 so bum, Mexico will pay for it didn't mean Mexico is going to pay for great, it. I will build a great, great wall, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. Mark my words. A lot of politicians have said, oh, they're not going to pay. They never read the art of the deal. We lose. We have a trade imbalance. But with Mr. Mexico. Trump, hold on a second, John. You, 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 of $50 billion. Dollars. I said, you're not going to do it. And everybody told me, everybody, this is like the wall. Believe me, we're going to build a wall. Mexico's going to pay for it. They don't get it because I'm a business guy. That's what I do. It's going to be built. It's going to be paid for by Canada, by the way. It's going to be paid for. Maybe I'll get Canada to pay. It's going to be paid for by Mexico. <laughs> Canada will pay for it. The are sharper and shrewder than our politicians. You know, I went to an Ivy League school. 
I was a good student. Mexico, in some form, and there are many different forms, will reimburse us, whether it's a tax or whether it's a payment. Probably less likely that it's a payment. There will be a payment. It will be in a form, perhaps a complicated form. We're working on a tax reform bill that will reduce our trade deficits, increase American exports, and will generate revenue from Mexico that will pay for the wall if we decide to go that route. We're thinking about building the wall as a solar wall, so it creates energy and pays for itself. What we say, <laughs> or not just with Mexico, will pay for the wall many times over. I view that as uh, wrong. absolutely Mexico is paying for the wall. And when I said <laughs> Mexico will pay for the wall in front of thousands and thousands of people, obviously they're not going to write a check. They're not going to write us a check, but... They'll pay. They'll pay in one form or another. They may even write us a check. They're not going to, but they may write us a check. Oh, okay. Uh, good job. So guys, good is job, Mexico America. Is Mexico paying for the wall? I'm going to go out on a limb and say... No. Didn't we have a government shutdown because Trump wanted money no. from the U.S. taxpayers We already wall? paid a couple billion dollars for that shutdown. $11 billion so. would cost the U.S. economy. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's so $11 billion. So we paid for that cost. And now we're going to pay, if, if Trump gets his way, $8 billion more. Dollars. Sweet. Which, I mean, that's covered. So, teacher, how much is the wall going to cost? There's And there's a lot of numbers floating around because obviously we know the exact details of how the wall, what materials, what kind of wall we're going to get, how deep the wall is going to go. So, if the wall is built, people deserve to know how much it's going to cost. I mean, uh, something like this. Um, you know, I'd say like, uh, I mean, if you get Mexicans to build it, you know, <laughs> maybe you could get the cost. I don't know. How much would. How much is it going to cost? Trump wants $5 billion, but I understand that's not even close to being the uh, the actual cost of the fucking thing. Right. So there's a uh, then I pulled them from finance on Yahoo. So the real cost of the Trump border wall, if you could just cue that up. And this is some very and we're going to look at uh, some varying estimates of it's and uh, of course the real Mandela effects cost County. of Trump's border wall. So if you scroll down, we can it'll show us that the actual numbers. OK. Here we go. So the real cost. So let's go from there. So here's a breakdown of construction cost estimates according to various sources. Now, Trump's been all over. The, they have 12 billion cited here. I've heard it all over the map. It's the, it has been. The, 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 the Trump's price tag has been all over the place. I'm pretty sure it's been higher than 12 billion. And keep in mind, this is just to build the wall itself. So Nothing uh, else. Former House Speaker Paul Ryan says 15 billion. Okay. All right. Department of Homeland Security says 22 billion. Washington Post says $25 billion. Senate Democrats say $70 billion. Which so. might actually be the most accurate of any of those. Oh, really? Because I thought they were just hyping it because they're politicians. Well, this is just the construction cost of the wall. Construction cost. The construction cost. cost. Just the construction cost. So besides cost. the construction cost, physical construction cost There's of, maintenance, of, the wall, of course, right? Yeah. There's, the, uh, there's land acquisition. There's basically legal fees. Of course, the construction cost. I legal mean, fees from... Eminent domain lawsuits yes. that are inevitable. And then the actual cost of buying the land from people, because eminent domain doesn't mean the government just takes your land. They do have to compensate There's a legal you. process that they have to go through, yes. So they got to buy a bunch of land through eminent domain to get the land to build the wall. And then they have to deal with the vast preponderance of lawsuits from the eminent domain. Oh, well, dude, look, look, look at this. Okay, so at this point, the exact cost of the proposed wall for the U.S. taxpayers is unknown, but there are tangible hints at the price. For instance, according to CNN, eight prototype walls have been constructed as of May 2018 with a cost between 300000 and 500000 each. Uh, the people footing the bill to protect the, uh, the, uh, to protect the prototypes, San Diego taxpayers, have shelled out at least $2.3 million to support the cost. <sighs> So it's just eight. a giant money pit. Yeah. Oh, that's all it is, dude. It's a giant monster that eats taxpayer money. So not only is the wall a completely ridiculous, ineffective solution to an exaggerated problem, but on top of all that, it also is a giant money fucking pit. money pit it's that we're just no, going no, look to... At these that's going to just drink American and tax talking, dollars yeah. and give us nothing in return. And we're not even talking about the maintenance costs. Let's, let's say you do all this stuff. <laughs> okay, so, uh, for example, according to the Committee for the Responsible Federal Budget, 
if the cost of the wall were projected $15 billion, it would cost about $120 per household based on census data of a U.S. household as of January 2017. Now, based on that ratio and projected cost of $22 billion, as the DHS suggested, that would work out to $176 per household. The highest projected estimate, $70 billion, would cost American households about $560 uh, in tax dollars. So I mean, every household in America, would, if, if that $70 billion estimate is correct, would be shelling out $560 in tax dollars. Just for construction, though. The construction of the wall. <clears throat> We're not talking about... Anything else. Accruing the land, dealing with the lawsuits... The law enforcement. Doing the maintenance, getting the... Still paying for our regular border security. Right, because, like, well, let's let's break it down a little bit. What would the maintenance This be? is from the party of fiscal I've, responsibility, I've by the way. I've heard as low as $150 million a year, upwards of $1.5 billion a year. So, and, and, and what, like, but what would they be doing to maintain this wall? Well... Some people would answer, how do you stop people from just tunneling straight through the wall, just breaking the wall yeah, and so, going through well, it? Well, Border Patrol does currently. So the Border Patrol will be tasked. So that would have to add right. a huge increase in people to fix the wall. So the Border Patrol would have to be upped enough to patrol enough of this wall to find these holes that people are coming through. And constantly through. repair them. And then somebody, the Border Patrol agents that are finding these things probably aren't going to repair them. So you got to pay somebody to yes. come and patch the hole up. Yep. Yeah, uh, and of course, that, you know, that's done through the government, so it's going to be very expensive. For the, to these walls are going to naturally, you know, wear down and erode over time. There's going to be inclement weather and events, yeah, flooding, other flooding things. Flooding and all this type of shit. There's I mean, going to have to be somebody to river. come maintain it. So, I mean, when the river Rebuild overflows. Rebuild the parts. Yep. Yep. So, it's just a constant money sink that provides us with nothing. It's going to change nothing. So, I thought it'd be interesting to pull some, um, basically... Other ways we could spend the money. Okay. And this is not even with how he can spend all the money. This is just, just how he can spell billion. the five billion so that the Trump's five billion, been begging yeah. for yeah. with his hand out. Of course, they pulled the Great Wall of China. <laughs> we can just why don't we just import that wall? They don't need it. Uh, by the way, most of that was built in the 16th century. Most uh, this is uh, there's been walls in China for about, from about I think the second century uh, BC. Onward, so I mean, or, these walls have never been effective. China was ruled by a ser series of like fiefdoms, <laughs> and the Mongols and foreigners. I mean, these walls have never been. Effective. You mean the wall didn't stop them? No, the wall actually never stopped any of those invasions. Never even came close. That, to never even close. <laughs> Oops. Well, damn. But at least if we were building something like that, like people, it, it could be a tourist attraction, kind of like they have. But we're not even going to get something like that. We're going to get a piece of. Yeah, shit. we need a wall that people can walk along. We need the Great Wall of America so we can at least, like, charge people to so come see it. You could provide Medicaid for 1.4, uh, not billion, well, a million people. Nice. Okay. Sounds like that's a better use. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Uh, more than double federal spending on energy efficiency and renewable energy. Who needs that? Come on. Energy. Give the Environmental Protection Agency a 60% raise. Oh, not really. That. That's not really super useful when the head of the agency is a Trump shill who doesn't believe in climate change yeah uh increase federal aid to public k-12 schools by 30 percent another one that i think is a, a dubious use of funds because throwing money at these schools is not gonna yeah, fix that's them. not the solution yeah you need better things than that fund the national endowments of the arts through 2051 okay i can get with that i like art uh double heating assistance for low-income households probably a better use than the art thing but i guess it just depends on your perspective uh, resettle 11 times more refugees than we did in 2018. Oh, pff, I don't think anyone that no. wants the wall to be built is, is in favor of that. Yeah, that's not really a good counter offer, you know? But, uh, some of the figures for the wall, like, I saw it went up to 77 billion. I mean, like, another thing is you could double the budget of NASA. I mean, there's so many programs in... Oh, I like that one. ...and things that we could do. And uh, by the way, that, that's about $20 billion. So that wouldn't even take care of the, all of the $77 billion. Uh, double funding year. for substance use uh, with $5 billion. Double funding for citizenship and immigration services. Yeah, one, another thing that the... Yeah, no one You're not that. convincing someone who wants to build a wall to instead spend that money on getting immigrants but here. But you, see, you okay. see something here like Trump has said the opioid epidemic is, uh, you know, something that we need to combat. And here you go. Why is he not proposing $5 billion to help fund the uh, programs like this to help people? And with mental health issues. You could put it, I mean, like, there's just a million things. I mean, you could put it in AI research. You could put it in fucking a yeah, thousand sciences. places. $5 billion is a tragically low estimate for what he's advocating for. 
and the ongoing maintenance clo- uh, co- costs would be fucking astronomical. It's just going to be a constant. The, well, drain. he's not. He's not looking for all of the funding for the whole wall now. He's just trying to get a big old section built so that the construction can officially so he can be paint underway. His stupid fucking face on it and yeah. point at it and do photo ops in front the of Donald it. The Donald J. Trump Memorial. Did you have wall. one of those pictures of like a fan? rendering of him standing in front of that wall talking. Yeah, I did. Uh, let's see. Uh, not that one. Where is it? Yep, that's yeah, that's the one. there you go. This is what he wants right here. This is, uh, this is a, yeah, this is a little, I love how much wall fan art there is. You see the jets flying overhead with the red, white, and blue. There's Trump standing there. <coughs> Huge crowd. And the wall is built, and it's all spangly yeah. and shit. And meanwhile, uh, the, America, the, finally great again. You see the fucking hill over there? Meanwhile, or, or under that hill, or uh, on the other side of the hill, a bunch of fucking uh, drug cartels and Mexicans are just popping out, pouring over the border right now. Yeah, behind dude. this big gathering of people going, yeah, the wall's going to work. I want a Mexican to just tunnel up in front of the crowd <laughs> and be like, uh-oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> just go back in. Secret Service is fucking pissed. I don't know. Yeah, dude. Ugh, hideous. Um, yeah, <laughs> that would be funny. Somebody with some Photoshop skills wants to draw oh, know, like dude. a crowd of people down at the end of the wall, scaling it and coming down and running. Uh, I guess the final, <laughs> the final question I have for you guys is: Why do you think that people are really? Uh, I mean, because the people that really support this are in Trump's base. Why do you think they really want this wall built? I mean, I, any of you talk to a lot of them, or I've seen interviews with them. A lot of them acknowledge, of course, tasks on this is not the end all and be all solution. It's a deterrent. That's what they, that's, right. the, that's the thing you always hear. This is a good deterrent. This is the best deterrent. We I mean, have. I said it earlier in the show, but like, I think it's symbolic for them because look, they're so these people are so wrapped up in symbolic issues like the NFL kneeling bullshit, and this wall is just a giant, overpriced, ridiculous like it's ego a, stroke. Yeah, it's a dick. It's yeah. a big, it's a big dildo. Yeah, it's just a big old dick. They want to all get together and stroke because they think it sends some kind of message. Uh, obviously, some of them are so dumb they think it's actually going to be effective. But I mean, uh, those people, there's nothing you can do about well, that. I'll, I'll give you my take. That's tragically, uh, yeah, they dumb. Just, you know, they need to have a job fucking screwing on peanut butter lids or something <laughs> in a factory. Yeah. And then you did not be told. I, 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 I just totally imagine agree. someone doing that. Like, there, there's another GIF. There's another GIF. Uh, but this is my take, dude. The wall is a giant fantasy. It's the answer to many of the problems facing Trump's space. The answer to illegal immigration, to people losing their jobs, to making less money, to losing their homes, to losing their way of life. They feel under siege, and that if they only we only get uh, tough and finally stand up for ourselves, they will save our republic. The struggle is rooted in human nature and deeply embedded cultural programming, but walls don't work. The desire for a better life or opportunity will always find people to answer the call. American businesses rely on immigrants, illegal or not, to do jobs that most Americans have little interest in. To those fleeing violence or persecution, the risk is worth the reward. I guess what I'm getting at is that walls don't change human nature. They're static. History is littered with walls that are designed to keep people in or stop them from going out. None have or can in the long term succeed. Yep, it's true. I don't see uh, any more reason to linger. I think we've just, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I was against the wall when I came in. Uh, I've been, I was neutral towards it at one point because I just figured like, whatever, let them have their stupid wall. I thought that it might turn into that evolving public works project that we were talking about where he's like, he builds this crazy fucking wall that does nothing, whatever. At least he puts some people to work and then he puts them to work in the inner cities and shit. You know, I thought maybe it'll no. turn into something like that. No. Now it's just been bargained down to an ineffectual bunch of ego stroking nonsense for him and his followers. And I mean, like, dude, we talked about walls before we started this. And like the first wall that was invented was climbed by somebody. Garen fucking <laughs> T. I guarantee it, dude. The first fucking chimp ancestor of ours that piled up some <laughs> rocks to pay to protect his shit. Some other chimp climbed it. Or just went right through it. Or went through it. Or yeah, whatever. kicked it down. <laughs> and came in. You, know? you know what I mean? It, and it's just like, why are we going to stop now? What makes us think that we've reached the place where putting a fucking wall up is going to stop determined human beings from passing through it? And these are some determined motherfuckers, too. You, that fucking, those, those tunnels we learned about. You don't you don't get two hundred some odd fucking tunnels found in ten years if you're if you don't have a thousand or two thousand other ones operating 24 7 digging these tunnels these people are determined to come here this barrier is nothing it's gonna amount to nothing 
other than a fucking giant drain and, on the and economy. It's, and it's not even a logical way to tackle the problem. I mean, it's it's ineffectual and it's not going to work. And if these people think it's going to change the game by building this wall, like you said, it's just a symbol. And symbols can be powerful and they can invoke things in people. They can invoke like, you know what? This is something we're doing to protect our country, but it's all it is. It's symbolic. It's not going to actually make any effectual policy changes. It's not going to make the changes necessary to our immigration system. They're going to lead to these things at least being dealt with in a reasonable and rational manner. All right. Let, me tell, you, let me tell you something, Scotty. <laughs> no, Paul. That's not the solution. Bring on the nukes. That's not the solution, Bring on the Paul. Nukes. Not this time. All right. What is, what's the solution? You know what the solution is, Paul? What's the solution, TJ? It's funny because you... It's funny you don't know because you actually hit upon it earlier. Oh, did I? What is it, man? Build that dome. Oh, yeah. Build that dome. 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 Hashtag build that dome. Dude, make America Thunderdome again. (laughs) Fuck yes, dude. Let's fucking do it. That's a fucking public works project.